<laughs> I'll note that. I'm not going to tell any jokes. That's normally someone else's job to tell a disgusting joke regarding penises and buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> and we're off. <laughs> nice. <laughs> hey, folks, it's Saturday night. Welcome to Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, this is the one shot edition. Uh, and we are happy that you've tuned in either live or later. Uh, if it's later, uh, step back in time and send us all the lottery numbers and we'll be eternally grateful as you know follow us on twitch follow us on twitter take a look at our youtube archive if you want to buy really cool murder hobo crap or really stupid crap uh to my left or to my right there's a link tinyurl.com rpg swag also there's a link to our discord channel and it's wrong so don't do it <laughs> i royally screwed that one up uh i blame uh she's not here i'll blame carol Carol. Carol. Yeah. Thank Carol. <laughs> uh, tonight we're going to be doing a one shot. Uh, we had a little bit of a cast issue, but we've got three people, uh, one of which you recognize, one of which has been here before and was foolish enough to return, and one who's never done this with us. And boy, <laughs> he lost that. Uh, we'll start with Scott. Scott, who are you and who are you playing tonight? Hi, um, my name is Scott. Um, I'm a dungeon master. Um, been in for, for I guess a little while, um, as evidence by my white hair and such. Uh, but I also like to play in one shots. And um, normally, um, yeah, that's what I kind of do. I'm playing David, who is a monk, um, way of the drunken master. So I think that I think that should be fun. Uh, the way I'm playing a drunken master is that he's basically just a normal monk, but he has no access to any of his key, no, no access to any of his monk powers, unless he's, <laughs> unless he's a little bit drunk. <laughs> so he'll have full access bit. to his key powers. So sure. he has full sure. access to his special, he has full access. He'll, he'll be able to have his powers. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, next up is Gwen. Uh, Gwen, who are you? Who are you playing tonight? Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Gwen. I'm in college, so I play any chance I can get. But I love D&D. &D. Um, I've been playing with the Murder Hobos for a little while, and s for some reason I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> you are a glutton for punishment. Who are oh, you playing yeah. tonight? <laughs> and I'm playing Bronwyn. She's a half-orc barbarian, and I have some anger to work out. So it's going to be great. Oh, that's just an awesome combination. Uh, <laughs> Last but certainly not least, our new player, who I'm sure he lost a bet. Uh, <laughs> it's going to get confusing because Scott is playing David, but David is playing Irwin. David, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us who you're playing. Okay, my name is David, and I'm playing a, a forest gnome named Irwin. Uh, he's kind of got a little bit of an accent. Oh, yeah. He's a shorty. Uh, he uh, kind of sounds like he came from uh, a place uh, a little further south than anything. Probably, if, if this world has an equator, it's lower. Uh, he's a moppy-haired uh, little guy. For some reason, his armor kind of looks like a set of khakis, and he's got that crikey accent. <laughs> Oh, oh. Is it too late to back out tonight. <laughs> we throw up the technical difficulties. Jesus Christ. Oh man. Okay. There you have it, folks. <laughs> have it. Yeah. Let's let's see what we can do with these guys. Uh, I've tuned these guys in. Uh, we've given them either magic armor or magic weapons. Uh, each one of them has a potion of extra healing, even though. I'm certain they aren't going to need it. This is an easy <laughs> job. They've been assigned by the local ruler to go into the Northwest Territory, which was formerly ruled by angry dwarves, probably anger management issues, just like Bronwyn has. Uh, but nobody's seen the dwarves in quite a while, and the lady of the kingdom says, screw it, we're taking that land, uh, and has sent these three in uh, to go ahead and do a mapping expedition very simple. Just go in, figure out what's there, uh, and see how life is so that she can go ahead and make the appropriate uh, moves with her military to shore up the hopefully fertile land beyond. 
that was yesterday. Today, these three arrive on horseback, even though one is a drunken master, to the small, we'll call it backwater village, probably something that Irwin is going to fit right into, uh, called Bogton. Now, as you three start to approach this town, you notice a smell. <clears throat> And it's not a very pleasant one. So I'm going to need DC 12 versus Constitution from all of you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Getting right into it. Uh, 12. Barely. Plus, plus two. <laughs> okay. I, 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 oh, DC 12. I thought you meant roll a D12. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> the drunken master is home. Dirty 14. A nine. Bronwyn, half orc barbarian. Oh, oh. oh no. Give oh, me a Lord. D6. Odd, uh, you managed to throw up on the ground. Even you throw up on your mount. Uh, even. On your mount. Oh, no. <laughs> Go ahead and DC 12. Let's see if your uh, horse kicks you off. Any modifiers? Mid decks. Uh, so that's a dirty 22. Okay. You managed to hang on to your vomit covered mount, take the back of your hand, wipe it off, and flick it, uh, just narrowly missing an individual who is kind of overweight, uh, kind of ugly, and kind of strange looking. Uh, he introduces himself as Fator. Uh, which means stench in Latin. Uh, he is the mayor of Bogton. And he points out, welcome, welcome, brave adventurers. I understand you are here for a survey mission. Uh, Milady has already sent us uh, the notification, and we have your supplies. He turns to Bronwyn and says, are you okay? Because <laughs> you've got a little, you got a, you got, you, got, oh, you, got, um, you know what? Never mind. You, you, a little schmutz, a little schmutz a right little here. Schmutz. Uh, Irwin and David, you notice that uh, the aroma is coming from the west side of town, but it's also coming from Fator. Uh, kind of gamey, a little bit of game. It's not Saturday night, so uh, Fator has not showered yet. Uh, he inquires. Uh, if you are familiar with the general area uh, around uh, Bogdan. I, I shake my head. No, no, I, I, I don't, I don't remember any of this. Okay. Uh, we sit on a uh, swamp. Perhaps you have noticed the aroma pointing at Bronwyn. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I can't say as I have. Uh. Uh, well, you smell like it now. <laughs> uh, he says, uh, your mounts, are uh are your mounts are gonna have to stay here while you do your survey mission because you'll have to cross the swamp to get into the uh, dwarven held lands i'm sorry ex dwarven held lands uh, i'll ask him a question um um about have they when was the last time they've seen any any dwarf in the area or are there any rumors about what what about what happened to them? did they die or did they leave Arcana, all three of you. Please. Yes, you needed to ask. <laughs> I got a 15. I got a three. Uh, <laughs> not much better. Five. Only Bronwyn is aware that the aggressive dwarves have not been seen in almost a decade. That was the last time they did trading with her tribe. Uh, Fator will go ahead and confirm this. He points out that he hasn't seen a dwarf since he's been uh, mayor of this fine place. <laughs> he straightens up his uh, stained clothing and uh, takes a great deal of pride in his position, but not his appearance. Uh, he will point out that the dwarves used to uh, somewhat disagreeably go ahead and trade with the locals, including the barbarian tribes, uh, but they have not been seen in almost a decade. Uh, they have been 
they being the people of Bogdan, uh, are not permitted to go across the swamp. He will point out that the swamp used to have a bridge. That bridge failed during a very big flood, uh, which for some reason, nobody's quite sure why, this remained, and that's why there's a swamp here. Huh. Now, freaky. he will point out that the area you're going in is in two parts. There's a veil with an incline, and then there's a cliff face, and then there's another plateau. Uh, and that is why uh, taking your mounts would be foolish, and the DM would just kill them immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay, so um, said, so, well, do, do we? Do, would you recommend a place here, <clears throat> maybe close to a tavern, that um, that where we could leave our, uh, we could board our horses? I have been instructed to take care of your mounts, and they will be safe and sound if you return. I mean, when you return. <laughs> now, uh, as it is closing in on the evening meal time, we have made accommodations for you at an inn, best inn in town, I might add, uh, which has a tavern next to it. Or if you'd like, you can get right to it and uh, cut across the swamp. What do you? Th I'll turn to my compatriots and ask 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 what they think. Should we press on, uh, or uh, or should we uh, spend the night here and then press on first at uh, first light? Uh, I vote for leaving in the morning. Yeah, I'd second that. I'd second that too. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fedor says, follow me. I'll take you right to the septic. <laughs> that's so, the so, end. That's the end. <laughs> what? The, the septic. The awesome. septic. Oh, wow. Great. Nice. Great. The tavern is called the tank, and it's right next door. <laughs> so it's the septic and the tank. And the tank. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Uh, he has been instructed to A, uh, make sure that your needs are taken care of, including your mounts. You will have free lodging, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, meal service is on him. Uh, expenditures on alcohol is on you. No problem there. I'm. I'm <clears throat> I'll. I just need some traveling. Ooch, that's all. Fair enough. Did you want to check in at the septic or go to the tank? I think we need to check in and then go. But you know, I'll I'll leave it up to Irwin and Bronwyn to to see if we need to, if, if they have a different idea. <laughs> uh, Bronwyn, what do you think? <laughs> uh, let's check in first. Why not? Uh, you meet a matronly woman of average appearance uh, who wipes her hands on her apron before shaking your hands vigorously. Hello, hello. We rarely get strangers here. Uh, I have the best rooms involved. Uh, they are on the east side of our establishment, away from the aroma, uh, because you... Uh, Oh. You know you have something, right? Mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you got most of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, she'll, she'll show you to your rooms. Uh, each one of you has an individual room. It has a lock on it, which is a bonus. Uh, the rooms are the classiest in the septic. Uh, can, I, can I reach the latch? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll let you read because these people are slovenly uh, Southerners, so gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> they're a kindred spirit. There might even be a Confederate flag hanging over. Oh, God. <laughs> Actually, you know what? There's not. There's and uh, David will appreciate this. Uh, there are. There is a giant uh, rack of antlers right behind <laughs> the front, and there are mugs with people's names carved in it. That would be the staff mugs. Outstanding. Outstanding. And you know what? I'll even put a... One, two, three, four. Uh, David, the drunken monk, has a stuffed jackalope in his room. Uh, Irwin and Bronwyn, you have paintings. Okay. Not jackalope. very good paintings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's no stuffed jackalope, but it'll do. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At, once you check in, uh, you are given a key, uh, and then you can go to the tank if you would like. Yeah, I'll, I will. Um, um, that's 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 what David would like to do, and he's and he's going to be kind of in a hurry. He 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 don't want to seem rude, but he is in a bit of a hurry. He feels better if he knows he has the supply. 
Fair enough. Uh, Irwin and Bronwyn, are you also meeting with them at the tank? Yeah. Uh, yes, definitely. Going to make a beeline for the tank. You walk in and there are six people inside. Uh, a couple, a couple, and two singles. Uh, they all look like locals. Uh, one of them looks like a hunter. Uh, one of them looks like an outdoors woman. Uh, and then the couples look like maybe merchants. Uh, the uh, bartender, uh, who is average looking, uh, asks <laughs> what he can do for you. Um, <clears throat> I will saunter up to the bar um, and tell him I, I, I have two flasks that I need uh, filled with, uh, with strong spirits. And they're two like wine flasks. D12? Uh, yeah. Nine. He does as instructed. Okay, good. The two flasks. Of Irwin, what would you like to do? Uh, I'm going to try to hop on top of a bar stool and be like, uh, good eye, mate. Uh, what you got in beer? <laughs> that, that far south. <laughs> uh, give me a D, DC 10 versus Dex. Make sure you don't knock your face into the bar. Sure, sure. Uh, that would be a 15. Uh, you hop up uh, expertly on top of the tall stool, and he slides a big oil can looking mug at you, and it says, Fosters across nice. the side. No miss for beer. <laughs> <laughs> Bronwyn, what would you like to do? Uh, I want to get some food. We serve the best food in Bogton. We also serve the only food in Bogton. Alrighty. Um, you got a little. Still? <laughs> you didn't clean up. <laughs> I assume a, I assume a half orc female has a, a little scruff. <laughs> what is your charisma? My charisma is thirteen plus one. No, no, no you're 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 clean shaven. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Uh, you will not have any more vomit. You will just look peaked. Uh, they serve a big steaming plate of something. Give me a. Just a base D20 roll. Sure. 12. This smells okay. Okay. Do you eat it? Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. It's okay. It's not bad. It's not horrible. <laughs> uh, one of the couples leaves. Uh, you are left with two individuals and a couple. Uh, would you like to have more to drink and eat, or what would you like to do? I kind of want to talk to the outdoorsy woman. Okay. Uh, I, I want to ask her, like, about the area beyond the swamp, like, why people aren't allowed to go there. She she lifts her eye patch, Alrighty. <laughs> showing that she has, for some reason, two good eyes. You don't know why she has the eye patch on. Uh, she says, "Little Missy, are you going to go in there?" Uh, yeah, I've been hired by the uh, the lady around here. Ooh, the lady, gotcha. So you're going to go into certain death and anger the dwarves. I, I was under the impression that the dwarves were dead. Dwarves never die. They're a lot like goonies. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey. wh why certain death? The dwarves are killers. I've seen them. I have seen them with my own eyes. Uh, they're, is anyone they're huge dwarves. <laughs> they're like five and a half six feet tall easy oh man, oh, man. um she doesn't seem stable <laughs> no okay um, too much time out in the woods maybe well okay is anybody else in my party overhearing this conversation i kind of got an eye i'm kind of kind of leaning in just He's like tipping on the high bar stool yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was I was going to make my way over to the hunter. So I don't know where the hunter is in relation to the outdoorsy woman. Just a so table away. It's a table away. So that's where I would have been making my way over to. I don't know at what point I would have been able to start overhearing part of this conversation. Okay. Uh, give me a perception check, David. Not Erwin, David. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't going to get confusing at all. Not at all. Not at all. 
Not at all. Uh, Bronwyn, uh, give me a uh, perception as well, please. That's a dirty 21. I got a whopping nine. Okay. You, uh, Bronwyn, you, uh, there's something wrong with this lady. <laughs> There's just something wrong with her. Uh, David, you can see the hunter roll his eyes uh, as the uh, woods woman uh, talks to Bronwyn. I'll um, um, introduce myself uh, to, to the hunter, uh, and I'll just ask him, uh, um, uh, so have you, uh, have you had any success in your, um, in, your, in your hunting lately? Persuasion. Erwin, uh, the bartender slides into the Fosters for you. Uh, the Fosters, okay. That's, that's, that's just a straight 11. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> Your input. Good talk. Good talk. Good, Good talk. talk. Good luck. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll walk over to the, to the bar tender and, uh, um, ask the bartender, what does the hunter drink normally? PBR. <laughs> <laughs> Pasty red brew. Brew. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, I'll order, um, I'll order a PBR. And uh, um, um, I'll, matter of fact, I'll order two. And I'll, this time I'll start drinking one and uh, walk back over to the table of the hunter with a uh, with PBR in hand. And say, um, look, I, I I don't mean to disturb you, and I put the deer, put put the put the beer next to him. Say, just we're just about to head out. We've been hired to do a job, and um, any pointers you could give on the best way to get through the swamp would be greatly appreciated. Persuasion at advantage, and he takes the beer. That's a nineteen. The advantage helped. Straight through the middle. Just walk right outside the tinker's shop. Trudge your way through, through almost waist deep. Or when did you catch that? I waist deep that. water. <laughs> and uh, you'll go a, a mile or two, and then the ground will start to rise. You should be fine. I Bronwyn. Thank him for his, I, I thank him for his time, and I let him enjoy his beer. Bronwyn. And the dwarves have three arms. Three. 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 They're yay tall. They've got three arms. So while they're pummeling you this way, there's always a third shot right there. You're going in and you're going to die. Can I have your stuff? Uh, I slide her like a, a silver piece just for, you know, being entertaining. My cats will eat well tonight. <laughs> Erwin, the bartender looks at you and he goes are you with those two uh yeah i am i am mate. i'm with them you know they're talking to crazies right i kind of got that impression okay uh are you guys headed into the dwarven lands uh as a matter of fact we are you know you got to go through the swamp right uh yeah, yeah. you might want to watch for quippers quippers okay they uh they're ankle biters or in your case shoulder biters <laughs> i can sell you a pair it. of stilts if you'd like <laughs> no no i think i can trudge on through mate okay uh that'll be as much information as you garner from the tank <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys may return to your uh rooms later after you've had your fill of food and drink uh there will be no more colorful characters coming in at this point in time uh but you may drink as much as you want and get as hammered as you'd like uh, i i i, I save the getting hammered for whenever I, whenever i'm in combat so i'll um i'll Wise um, choice I, I will i will retire to my room to get good night's sleep Dawn breaks anew. <laughs> Bronwyn, give me another constitution check. Let's see if you've uh, <clears throat> hashed out the smellies. 
That is a 20. Oh, very nice. Yes. Uh, the night of rest has done you well. Uh, once you get back to civilization, you'll notice that the stench is still following each of you, though. Uh, the morning is anew. You have been packed a light breakfast. No second breakfasts involved. Uh, and uh, Fator, <coughs> excuse me, Fator uh, comes to see you off. Uh, he says, we've prepared a hero's departure for you. What does a hero's departure entail? Uh, Bronwyn, the lady that you were talking to, has brought all six of her cats, and they are watching you guys <laughs> leave the inn. Awesome. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> they seem to be fat and happy. <laughs> oh, that silver piece got enough kibble for everybody. Uh, let's see. Uh, David, you spot the Tinker's Shop. Uh, it is dead center across town. Okay. Um, I... Um, <clears throat> form our party uh erwin and bronwyn um I, I i think the best way to go but i'm 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 uh, not sure about this uh the, the the hunter said we should just go straight through the swamp about a mile or two we should start to get a little bit firmer ground so that's that's what i think uh, hunters normally know this stuff pretty well but of course you could just been yanking my chain but he did take my beer so i'm i'm, I'm hoping that he gave some good some good advice. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, sounds pretty sound. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's our best bet given it's you know our only bet. You know, it's the only thing we have to go off of. <laughs> you know, so, okay. Judging from the party's names, maybe I should have made it a stingray instead of quippers. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, you guys trudge off uh, the cat's meow in. You're guessing a huzzah. Uh, nobody <laughs> else in town seems to give a rat's ass that you're leaving, that you're here, or that you even exist. As you trudge past the tinkers, you notice that the ground slopes a little bit. Uh, within eyesight, you see the other side, but you are going to be passing over a small river. Uh, and as David has heard, uh, this is going to be kind of high for uh, Erwin. Uh, Erwin is going to wild shape into a crocodile. <laughs> David Bronwyn, a crocodile appears. Roll initiative. <laughs> 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 Maybe Erwin should have mentioned that before he gets. Yeah. You believe that Erwin has been eaten by a crocodile. <laughs> Uh, you see your uh, diminutive associate change rather rapidly and dip into the water. All right. I start drinking because that, 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 that kind of freaked me out. So <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to break the hooch open and take a little swig. So I normally don't start this early in the morning, but I better, I better get it's going. It's got to be eight, 10 AM somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Ronald, that's... what about you uh, I've seen weirder shit and I'm seven feet tall so I just head right in <laughs> so it, it comes up maybe just over the knee on you you just tromp through uh, David and Bronwyn uh, the ground is kind of mucky uh, give me perception checks 15 17 you do not see any of these quippers uh that Irwin was warned about but failed to tell you about. You see no animal life whatsoever. Uh, and you make it across just as Irwin, the crocodile, waddles up onto the other side. Apparently, Irwin, uh, quippers do not like crocodiles. So, or Price they don't scared them away. Yeah. Yeah. Price uh, scared. yeah, you reach the far side, which is filled with <laughs> mossy trees and. Uh, a gelatinous muck underneath your feet. The going will not be very fast. However, uh, you notice that your uh, first uh, target, uh, your first two targets actually in the center are swampland, or swampland, and four uh, odd even to the south is also swampland. So you're already making progress on your map. Awesome. Great. So we got to fill in all that white crap. Yeah, we won't do that for Murder Hobo Inc. 
Right. Well, we, we, we keep moving off to the northwest. Then. I think uh, I think is the I, I think is the best way to go. Um, unless um, I, I'll I'll um, I think we have a druid. We have a half orc. Um, Bronwyn, uh, I, I would probably feel a little bit better if uh, if you might want to take the lead. I'm 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 happy to be right behind you and help any way I can, but um, I need to get a little bit more in me before I'm before I'm brave enough to lead the line. Alrighty, yeah, I'm uh, I'm up for that. Uh, so Bronwyn, looking at your map, uh, where do you want to go? Uh, you can call it out by the numbers. Uh, folks at home, I've already delivered the map to these guys, uh, and it is also on the main screen for your oh. viewing pleasure. Oh, goodness. I have to find it. <coughs> well, are you going to follow the mountains? Because he said northwest. Are you going to try and stay into the interior? Let's go with that. Um, I think maybe if we if we go around the edge and then like circle back into the center. That's fair. Uh, as you go into the edge, you find a lot of weeping willow trees here, uh, which would be akin to a swamp area. And then uh, you hear a shriek behind you from the drunken monk as a large snake drops out of a tree. Initiative, everybody. 18. Uh, let's see. Uh, 13. 15. What was yours, Erwin? 13. Everybody beats me. Uh, the shriek has come from David, the drunken monk, and he has a large slithering serpent landing on him. Uh, Bronwyn, you want initiative? You're up first. Um, what kind of snake are we talking here? Like, how strong is it relative to a half orc? Uh, giant constrictor snake. Yeah, I'm going to try to yank it right off him. Please be wrapped around the monk's head. <laughs> no. <laughs> go, ahead and, go ahead and do a grapple. First off, go ahead and hit it. AC 12 should be easy. So grab it and throw it. Um, any modifiers for that? Uh, we'll go dex since you're trying to grab it. So that's 16. You hit. Uh, now... Uh, are you going to just try and rip it off of him? Um, well, I don't want to, I don't want to hurt him. I don't want to like yank him towards me, but I want to like get it off of him and like throw it as far away as I can as soon as possible. Bronwyn D12, David D12. Six. Four. <laughs> Uh, Bronwyn, the snake has already uh, encircled David's head, and as you yank it, he is flung towards you. David, give me a DC 12 dex to make sure you can still stand on your uh, teetotaling. Yeah, that's uh, so a dirty 21. Okay, you tear the snake off, but you spin David around, uh, causing him to temporarily lose his direction. Uh, Erwin, you are up next. You see the snake fall, <clears throat> but it only falls five feet in front of you and jerks its head around. So it is your turn to react. Okay. Uh, how long has it been uh, since I shifted? Uh, Time-wise? Oh, uh, probably 10, 15 minutes. Oh, okay. In that case, uh, yeah. <laughs> This beautiful specimen of a crocodile is going to turn and uh, make a bite attack on the snake. Fair enough. Uh, AC 12 to hit. Okay. Uh, that would be um, 19, actually. Hits. Okay. Go uh, ahead and hit it with a snapper. And hit that snapper. Uh, <laughs> for a uh, Big whopping three piercing damage. Wow, nice hit. <laughs> yeah, uh, nice set of chompers on this on this croc. David, you're up next. Give me a D4. One or two, you are still facing the creature, and you can attack normally. Three and a four, Bronwyn has spun you around. Three. Uh, she has spun you around, so attack at minus one. Okay, I will take my quarterstaff and try to smack it with my quarterstaff. No, that will not do. 
swing and a bit real bad or just it was a two uh, uh odd even two bronwyn that quarter staff just right past your nose uh the snake is now pissed and it's going after five bronwyn it did not appreciate you smacking it and it's going to snap at you and miss with the four. Uh, we'll start at the top of the order. Bronwyn, uh, you have not defeated the snake, and it's angry. Go ahead. Um, so I'm going to whip out my sword and try to, like, cut off its head. That'll work. And I get, like, a nine. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Erwin, uh, crocodile man. Okay, going to take another chance. Just a bit outside. <laughs> Ooh. Well, uh, in murder hobo world, a one means you've probably hit yourself or your associate. So give me a D6. <laughs> if it's a one, two, it's you. If it's three, four, the drunken monk got it. And if it's five, six, Bronlin the Barbarian took one for the team. <clears throat> six. Bronlin takes one for the team. <laughs> uh, do your damage roll and cut it in half for friendly fire. Uh, okay. what, what dice? No, for her, for him. Right, he's, right, right. Okay. He's hitting you. Yeah, it's a it's a d10, and I just rolled ten, so five. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right. The crocodile seems to not give a shit. Maybe if you would have killed it when you were crossing the river, like I warned <laughs> you, this wouldn't have happened. But that's okay. Uh, that brings us to David, the drunken monk. Okay. Um, I will um take a bonus action to drink more hooch uh i need one more one more hooch uh in order for me to get all of my uh, for me to get all of my kai my key powers i have to take three um and they last for like you know 10 minutes right so i have to maintain basically right i have to maintain gotta maintain you gotta are maintain. a functioning alcoholic we'll give right. you that. precisely precisely <laughs> So um, that's my bonus action. And as an action, I rolled another two. Erwin <laughs> uh, uh, the Crocodile. <laughs> you guys know this is an easy thing, right? <laughs> uh, the Constrictor Snake is puzzled, but is going to take the opportunity to attack the Drunken Monk. Uh, with a six. So, oh, plus six, 12. That 12. doesn't hit. Okay. Uh, top of the order, Bronwyn, you have been assaulted by a crocodile, and you have a snake trying to bite at you. Uh, so target would you like? <laughs> so I didn't take kindly to that attack, so I'm going to enter a rage and go for the snake. Oh, you live to fight another day, Erwin. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my line of sight, you know? Like, it's clobbering time, but it's right there. There you go. Um, and I got a nat 20, so. Ooh, re-roll. <laughs> Murder hobo rules. We'll uh, re-roll the d20, see how bad you crush that thing. Uh, and then a nat 1. What are the chances? <laughs> uh, max full damage. Alrighty. I'm... Yeah, 1 to 10 is max full. 11 to 18 is double max, and 19 and 20 is triple max. Uh, so I'm using a long sword, so that's a D8. So 8 plus strength is, bonus is? 12. There you go. Now we're on the board. Uh, Drunken Monk, try and okay. hit maybe the bad guy. Okay, this okay, okay, guys, guys, I got this. I got this. So I take one more little thing of hooch. So now with full power, now full power is this. Yo, watch this. Watch this. I got this. I hope you roll one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, 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 would, I think that's a nine plus. Wait, it, it's okay. It's either a nine or a six. Does it have a dot? It has a dot. High or low? I, I don't know what that means when you say high or low. Let's see. See, it has a six right there. Where's oh the dots in the nine? That's a nine. Okay, so nine plus six is fifteen. <clears throat> yeah, that hits. Get some real dice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So it's one d six plus four. 
We'll have the producer make you a set. <laughs> Ten. Ten damage. Nicely done. Uh, Irwin, you have successfully identified who are the good guys and the bad guys, maybe. <laughs> so Now that I have my bearing. So. Now, now that we know it was an accident. <laughs> Hey, I had to get her into rage somehow. You yeah, know? that's true. Yeah. <laughs> it was all purposeful, sure. I'm doing a favor here. Yeah. Okay, another bite attack, and that is uh, 16. That hits. Okay. <laughs> uh, that would be uh, 11 points of damage. Very nice. Uh, I am going, oh, yeah, I am going to start to retreat as the snake. Uh, top of the order, Bronwyn, for once, the crocodile didn't bite you in your ass, and the drunken monk didn't swing his staff too close to your face. Uh, what would you like to do? You can chase down the snake and continue to attack because you are raging. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to chase after the snake and, uh, slash at it again with my long sword. Fair enough. And I got a four. Wow. I mean, <laughs> suck. <laughs> the dice are not kind to us tonight. That's true. Uh, David, drunken monk. How far away is this is this snake? It has just started to leave, so it's probably eight feet away. Eight feet away, okay. So I can't use my charger feet. <clears throat> I will close with it, however. And uh, um, I, I don't want to do my flurry of blows just yet, I'll, but I will attack it normally with my quarter staff. Okay. Guys, I'm really feeling it now. I'm really feeling it. Nat 20. Oh, very nice. Reroll. Nice. Those powers have been activated. Uh, 18 is double max. Double max is going to be 6 is 12. 12 would be 16. 16 points of damage. Hang on for the math. 31, 41. Uh, that is enough to kill the snake. You have See, apparently I'm, stabbed I'm it through both eyes. And I'm just, this, this snake was nothing, man. It was nothing at all. It was just simple. simple. Uh, I will do this do, all fucking day. I will do perception check by all of you. Please. 30, 22. Uh, 13. Uh, <clears throat> For Erwin, that is uh, 25. All three of you recognize hmm, this might make some nice boots or a scabbard or a belt, maybe even a backpack. Or a pterodactyl. Or a brooch. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I can make out of it. <laughs> Well, Erwin will slip out of crocodile form, grab that Bowie knife, and just slit that thing open. He's got a pretty high survival skill, so... DC 16 versus animal handling, gotcha. please. Or, I'm gotcha. sorry, 15 versus animal handling. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. That will be actually um, 9 plus 6, so 15. 15 on the nose. Uh, David, Bronwyn, you notice that the druid, who I thought everything was sacred to him, uh, <laughs> has decided to, to carve up the giant constrictor snake and is butchering it uh, to the point where he can make a pair of boots, a belt, a backpack, and either a decorative hat, Steve, or a scabbard. <laughs> okay. I'm going to lean over to Bronwyn. <laughs> hey the laws of nature mate is just like you know don't leave anything behind you know that isn't useful so yes you can hey. take that back to bogton and uh have the uh tanner work on uh those items if you want so you guys can be really classy looking uh with that done uh bronwyn david and Irwin. You notice that the mossy trees uh, mark the edge, and you are now coming into broken land. Uh, there's broken land to the north and to the west, and in between both pieces of broken land is a river. Is this a deeper river, or is it like... Shallow river. 
Okay, a quick, quick. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will take perception from all three of you as well, please. Six. <clears throat> Don't see. Seventeen. Shit. See something. Twenty-one. Erwin and David, you tap Bronwyn on the shoulder and do this. Uh, you notice in the Broken Lands, there seems to be some large stone blocks. Uh, maybe tower kind of thing. Uh, or you can continue on your merry way along the creek uh, to the north or straight across. Like a tower? Like, for like a broken tower. Like an old watchtower. I, I I would suggest that maybe Bronwyn or Erwin, we, we might go check that out. If nothing else, we may be able to get up to a higher elevation and survey more area. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, a higher advantage point. That works for me. Anything taller? <laughs> <laughs> Is uh, everything taller? We might be able to survey a little bit more. You could probably keep guard while we... <laughs> well, I know Bronwyn, you know, she's... Oh, yeah, I, I got it, yeah. As, as long as she's looking the right way. <laughs> uh, if only we had somebody long and thin with us. So. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, Balin. Uh, the pile of stones that you spotted from the next region over uh, gets a little bit more descriptive as you get closer, and you realize that this is the ruins of a watchtower. Unfortunately, the upper levels of the tower seem to have caved in and there seems to be a substantial amount of vegetative growth surrounding the tower itself it was at one time circular or at least that's what the vegetation would like for you to believe because of the heavy vineage uh, you do not see an entry point and will have to look for it or if you'd like you can attempt to climb using the vines as leverage up to what uh give me uh give me survival checks all three of you please uh 20 not natural two 11 erwin you're certain that you can climb to the top without any problem you know it's going to support your weight bronwyn you know you cannot do that yeah that is not going to happen erwin or david Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try it because I, I have courage. I, I, guys, I got this. I got this. Or I can are climb you? right up there. <laughs> Anybody gonna try and see if you can climb with him? Uh yeah. Uh, Aaron's gonna try to scurry on up those vines. Bronwyn. Um, I'm gonna while they're doing that, I'm gonna try to circle the perimeter and look for an entrance through the foliage. Fair enough. Poking with your sword or gonna use your hand? Hand. Oh, got to see move. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I'm just out of a rage. I'm not. Thinking. And stop the clock. Bronwyn is dead at eight forty-eight. Uh, <laughs> Irwin and David, give me dex checks. Okay. As you, Batman and Robin, up the tower. <laughs> Is somebody going to pop out? And, uh, Sammy out Davis Jr. will be popping out and saying <laughs> hi. Because you guys are crazy cats. <laughs> We're crazy cats, man. Uh, Erwin uh, rolls a uh, four plus... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, with it, oh, with no. his dex modifier, eight. <laughs> a nice roll. David? Uh, I, that's, a, that's a 10. That's a dirty 10. Uh, David is hanging by a vine as he slips and catches uh, himself. Erwin is not so fortunate as he reaches the top, grabs a hold of the stone to pull himself, but yanks the stone over and they both fall. Bronwyn, Erwin, D12, please. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The cool oh, yeah. Man it's on. Here. <laughs> Five. Five? Nice uh, roll. I'm going to be laughing like Judge Schmales for the rest of the night. Erwin, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> what's your roll? Well, Chuckles is going to get one out of this. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is, Bronwyn, as you're patting the vegetation, your hand goes in to an alcove, and you hear 
bones moving within. Unfortunately, you see the bone Naga because the stone that Erwin dislodged has ripped the vines down, exposing the opening. Fortunately, Erwin has landed on top of you. <laughs> So I will take a DC 12 strength from Bronwyn, a DC 12 dexterity from Irwin. Oh, mother. I only get a nine. <laughs> Down goes Bronwyn. <laughs> I'm a fucking half work barbarian. Like, what's this gnome going to do to me? Look, God. Look up. <laughs> Ten, Irwin. For Ir 10 for Irwin. Not good enough. Uh, Bronwyn, uh, you get a face full of gnome butt and you are knocked backwards. Erwin, you get a face or a butt full of half orc face and you go <laughs> forward. Uh, David, you also hear the clacking coming out, uh, but you don't see anything. Bronwyn and Erwin, you will roll initially. Advan uh, disadvantage for initiative. David, you will roll normally, but you don't see shit as you're hanging from... Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go... Guys, guys, guys. <laughs> guys. <laughs> I'm going to keep climbing. Uh, how? <laughs> uh, 18 initiative. And that's at disadvantage? At disadvantage. We're, at, okay. we're adding the initiative modifier, right? Yeah. Correct. And Bronwyn, what was your non-disadvantage? Uh, non-disadvantage, seven. <laughs> okay. Uh, David, go ahead. What's your initiative? David. David, the character. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, this wouldn't get confusing at all. <laughs> One day there were three mics, and the fourth guy was named Mike. Oh, that's a seven. That's a seven. Yeah. Uh, 18. Uh, Irwin, you do a backflip up, and you immediately come face to face with a large uh, bone serpentine creature. Uh, you will all recognize this from myth and lore as a bone naga, a very dangerous opponent. One might even say hard opponent. <laughs> what would you like to do? Uh, I am going to produce flame to the face. Okay. Big to face. I'm going to get uh, a beer. <laughs> get a beer. Uh, let's see. That would be uh, 21. Does that hit? Oh, that hits. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, yeah, 15 is your magic number. Uh, four points of uh, fire damage. Way to piss it off. Uh, I rolled a seven, so I'll let David go <coughs> first. Uh, Bronwyn, next round, all three of us will be on the seven. So, David, you go first. You are hanging by one arm as you lost your balance but did not completely fall. You see flames fly off of Irwin's fingertips into what appears to be an alcove, and it appears to you as though he's trying to burn down the tower that you are so helplessly clinging to. Are you talking to me? Yep. I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm, 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 I'm going to keep climbing. I'm going to keep climbing. I don't know what they're doing. They're just <laughs> looking kind of crazy to me. DC 12 again. Uh, one to two, Irwin. Three to four, flat on your back and take damage. Five or six, you can land on the half orc. Five. <laughs> <laughs> Bronwyn, you begin to get up. Raise your sword. Wham! The monk hits you. <laughs> it's not always me. You are underneath the monk. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm so I'm so sorry. I'm I'm so sorry to need you. I just slipped. I'm so sorry. Get off of me. My turn, and I will go after one. Irwin. Irwin, give me a DC twelve, please. Okay. 
Uh, any modifiers? Wisdom. Wisdom. Okay. That's not going to save me because uh, that is a big seven. David Bronwyn, you notice that your diminutive friend is now covered in a blue glow and his hands seemed locked. <laughs> uh, Bronwyn, you lost this time. Give me a strength check to see if you can push the drunken monk off of you. If your roll using strength, well, I guess I don't need to go on. <laughs> <laughs> five uh david bronwyn appears to be trying to take advantage of you <laughs> <laughs> new round uh erwin give me another save see if you can break out of the spell okay uh let's see uh what kind of save uh wisdom again wisdom again okay i have advantage according to D D beyond for some reason is it, I don't know if it's a gnomish thing or... Uh, yeah, it's uh, for fear, probably. This okay. is hold person. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. 12. Uh, that is good enough to pass. The blue shimmering light passes away, and you notice that the damn thing is still inside the darkness and has not come out. Uh, what would you like to do? Uh, let's see. Uh, hmm. I think I'm going to try to seal this guy back up. Um, I am going to cast Entangle in the, alco in the alcove. Okay. What's my save? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, Don't worry about it. That's a 19. <laughs> 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 the tendrils that you produce from your hands uh, encircle the bony uh, creature, but then fall helplessly down. Uh, uh Back to the sevens, all three of us, even with Bronwyn. As David rolls off, uh, Bronwyn is free. David is free. Uh, the creature is still inside. I will let both of you go uh, first, if you would like. Bronwyn, what would you like to do? Uh, Not I'm real shitty. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if going after it with my sword will be effective at all. Um, Sure, I'll, I'll try it. I'll try swinging at it with my sword. Now you'll have to charge inside. Yeah. Okay. Rock on. <laughs> that is a 19. Ah, the war cry from the barbarian female pierces the air. <laughs> she charges in, narrowly missing the top of the entry point and smacking into this uh, bony... Naga. Go ahead. Now, much damage? Two whole damage points. Nice job. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are really just chopping it down. Um, uh, David, drunken master, what would you like to do? So I will, um, I will use my um, drunken technique to uh, to attack, and the the drunken technique is my. My speed is increased by 10, and my flurry of blows has the disengage action. So after I get done, then I can I can move out. So I'm gotcha. gonna make one attack, two unarmed strikes, and then move, move, move 10 feet back. Gotcha. That is my technique as I enter into this zen-like state, kind of wavering a little bit like this to the same time, just, just, just a little bit. So I go once with the quarter staff. Okay. That's going to be a 14. Is your magic number. What? 15 is your magic number to hit this thing. 15. So that's a 9 plus, oh, plus 6, because it's a plus 1 quarter staff. Yeah, so that's a 15 on the quarter staff. There you go. It's 1d6 plus 4, which is 5 hit points of damage. And unarmed strikes, which is 2 at plus 5. That's an 18 and uh, 15. Did both of those hit? I'm sorry, I missed it. 15 is what you need to hit. Okay, yeah, so that's an 18 and 15. So that's two hits. Yep. Um, that's three plus six for both of them. So that's nine total. That's that's all I can do. And I will disengage 20 feet back. That's fair enough. Uh, <laughs> all three of you. Okay. 
Uh, go ahead and give me D20 rolls, please. Not 20. Uh, 10. 10. 10 for me as well, Frank. Uh, Erwin and David, you notice what Bronwyn does not because she is engaged in battle. There are tremors from below you. Uh, and I will take wisdom checks from both of you. Wisdom check. Uh, that's is that nat 20. That's a 23 for me. So is it our nat proficiency? Uh, fif 15 for Erwin. Both of you realize that this dilapidated watchtower, if there's an earthquake coming, it ain't gonna handle it. <laughs> Fortunately, Bronwyn's inside, so she'll probably be spared. <laughs> uh, top of the order, Erwin. Uh, so she she's inside the the alcove itself. So and that's where safety is. Sure, you like sure. <laughs> what sure, could go, go wrong? Yeah, Freaking earthquake in this thousand year old tower that's already half crumbled it's probably the safest place right there in the uh doorway i believe is what they always tell you in elementary school it's right. in the doorway yeah she's right up in its grill she is she's going to town on this thing well for you know a couple of hit points <laughs> <laughs> two whole hit points that's right you're teaching it a lesson so what do you want to do erwin you can yell for her to get the fuck out or do some yeah, magic I'm shit gonna... or pee down your leg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to yell. It says, hey, hey <laughs> let's bug out of here, guys. <laughs> Back to the sevens, all three of us. Well, do I, do I hear him? Uh, he's got one of those annoying southern accents. So uh, <laughs> straight up D20. Uh, 16. You aren't raging, right? No. Yet? Okay. Yeah, you hear him. You hear, get out, mate. Get out. <laughs> that, that adds, that's, that's two different things. Get out or mate. Good day. Good day. Good day. He wants yeah, okay. you to mate with the bone <laughs> dog or get out. I choose get out. All right. David, you are already out. What would you like to do? Would you like to cover her escape or? I would like to cover her escape. I have drunken courage at this point. I'm going to, and my movement speed is, is effectively 55. So uh, I'll meet her halfway and um, um, help drag her out if I have to. Uh, but yes, um, I, I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a neutral good. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to do the right thing and cover her escape best I can. Fair enough. The Naga. David, give me a DC 12 wisdom, please. Scott. <laughs> That's a 12. That makes it. Uh, okay. <clears throat> you can hear the Naga's voice inside your head in common, and it appears to be cursing you, but you really don't give a shit. Bronwyn, uh, you do the barrel roll, try and get out, and you make it successfully out into the sunlight, uh, and surprisingly enough, the creature is not following. Uh, Erwin, top of the order. Uh, I am going to disengage and try to Tumble my little gnomish butt out of there. David and Bronwyn, you notice that your short associate is getting out of Dodge. Uh, I follow him. I will, I will follow as well. Fair enough. Uh, as you run away, run away, run away, Sir Brave Robin, uh, run, you notice run, that the baby. Naga is not coming out into the sunlight. Uh, David, give me a D12 against me, please. <laughs> you uh, you didn't get a really good view when you were at the top of the tower, uh, but you know that there is a second crick. One Thanks. is to the north, one is to the south. 
and they're both running from the west to the east. They probably fill the swamp. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> I I will. Um, hey guys, look. I I I know I fell down, and I'm really sorry about that, bro. I'm really sorry about that. But I think I think we should probably go back to that creek and try 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 to follow the direction. This is this is nasty bone naga, and we might knock it down. We might knock the tower down. Uh, I believe there's some <laughs> truth to that, actually. So, yeah, from what I gleaned, yeah, let's go for it. So you're gonna try and knock the tower down? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what I'm gleaning out of that. <laughs> oh god. Uh, let's go. Let's go to the crick. Get on the first crick that crick. you found, <laughs> or the second crick that he that he saw. I I, I think we go to the. I we go. We, there's, there's, you see, there's two of them. One we already saw, and one we haven't seen. I think we need one we see we haven't seen. The, the one we haven't seen is the one I think we should go to because we haven't seen it. We're supposed to see it. Hey, I mean, there is some wisdom in drunkenness, so why not? Yeah. <laughs> why not? Let's let's go to the unseen creek. Okay, so as you guys head over to the unseen creek, you will realize <laughs> that you are in between cricks. Uh, and headed west. Uh, once you get to the second crick, you notice that the landscape changes from broken to grassland. Oh. So you will pass through about four hexes uh, in doing so. So you are making pretty decent observations uh, as best you can tell. Uh, once you reach the second crick, uh, the sun will start to be in the afternoon. So you've got a few more hours where you can continue your exploration. The crick runs west, just like the other one. You can cross over it into a narrow strip of land next to the mountains, or you can continue through the center. I don't know. We, we made it to the crick. That's, that's all I can saw. So I think Bronwyn should 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 decide because she's very tall. That is true. Sage sage advice. Um, I my, say we- my logic is un is undivided is is unas- unsaleable. Oh, as clear as a bell, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, Irwin. I think we should go straight down the center. Uh, I agree. I agree. Fair enough. Uh, You guys cross over grassland and clear plains until you come to a large, large crevice. Uh, It's more of a cliff face. And uh, one of you learned that the area that you're exploring is set in two different parts. So this cliff face is absolutely sheer. I mean, sheer, just straight down. It's chiseled, uh, but, but, this is a very important but, as you're in the dead center with a crick over there and a crick over there, you notice in the top of the cliff, in the failing light, there are two immense stone statues that look like dwarves with crossed axes. The only problem is there is a narrow stairway going up on the crick on the left and on the crick to the right. The other problem you have is those crossed battle axes have broken and have rerouted the water onto those stairs leading up. (laughs) You can try and do it before the light completely fades or make camp. Hmm. Or, or, or we can try to do it at night. Or you can try and do it at night, which is really a great idea. <laughs> I, I'm just making sure that we, we don't leave any possibilities on the... No, no on stone the, unturned. On the, exactly. on the, on the, um, Sage um, advice yet again. Table. 
Uh, I say just for the sole purpose of keeping David from trying it at night, I say we make camp and go in the morning. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Does David agree? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I was I, I had no intentions of trying, although I'm pretty sure I could make it. Okay. Uh, as night falls, it is a full moon. So you guys are in the zone. Uh, who wants to take first of three watches? I'll take another shot, and I'll take middle watch, one in the middle of the night. Uh, Erwin will take first. No, I'll go last. Uh, David doesn't have dark vision, though, correct? Or no, he's a wood elf. Oh, yeah, you do. Uh, Erwin, you do as a gnome? Yes. And Bronwyn, you do as a half orc, correct? Okay. So all three of you have dark vision, even though the uh, moonlight is going to be exceptionally useful. Unfortunately, about midway through night, Erwin, you wake up David, who is starting to sober up, and he takes over watch. Uh, as the moon reaches its zenith, David, you hear a very loud howl, and I'll take a perception check, please. No, that's, that's going to be an 11. You don't know where it's coming from. It's canyons, <clears throat> ravines, and mountains. So give me one more perception check before a really big problem happens. That's going to be a 16. You see something climbing down the stairs from the zenith. I'm going to go and wake up my wake up my compatriots. And tell right. them to start donning their armor and getting ready because something looks like it's crawling down those stairs. And I think we're about to have a visitor. Uh, a four-legged something or a two-legged something? It's, two, it's on two legs, but it's climbing very, very good. It's a very good climber. About half. I'm not 100% sober, but I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. As you guys notice, uh, start to track this one creature, you notice that a second creature, also bipedal in nature, <clears throat> is coming down the other set of stairs. But it falls. <laughs> it falls really bad. And you see it about 80 feet away. You don't hear no howling. <laughs> Dang it. I'm going to run over there and see what it was. Okay. Guys, I'll be right back. This will be the one to the right. Uh, Irwin and Bronwyn, do you follow or do you maintain... Uh, visual on the other creature. I maintain visual on the other creature. Erwin? Split the party, split the party, split the party. Oh man, please don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to urge him not to go and uh, say, hey mate, wait for it. If, it. if anything's out there, wait for it to come to us. David? Okay. So you do not go? I do not go. And so now you're right, you're right. I was kind of feeling still the last bit of after effects of that liquid courage, but no, you're right. You're right. Okay. That's well, no, fair. just just if I need to if I need to main if I need to sit right here for a minute. Uh Irwin, Bronwyn, and David initiative. Eighteen. Uh fourteen. Dirty twenty. 3020 starts uh, as you guys keep track in this creature. You notice it is a large creature, possibly human size, but looks like a giant rat. It spots you and it closes on your trio. Is it hostile, like outwardly? It looks like it's got rabies. All right. It is a bipedal rat-like figure. And it is coming at you. That's my best. Rat -like. <laughs> best rat-like impression. 
they don't have seductive skills, so I've got to keep those uh, in the hot. Their seductive skills are very bad. Hardly anyone wants to go to bed with a rat. That's right. So, what's your in the mob? Other than Melania, sorry. <laughs> oh, nice one. Oh. <laughs> well, stop the clock. We went an hour and 15 before we went political. Political. Sorry about yeah. that. <laughs> 3020 is up first. What do you want to do with this giant bipedal rat creature? Um, I'm going to uh, close with it as well because it can't be friendly. And uh, um, uh, well, that so seems I'll, rather I'll... judgmental. <laughs> Well, you know, it's not like that. us, so let's kill it. Don't judge a rat by its cover. My God. <laughs> I, I know I should be a little more woke than that, but still. Um, the anti Star Trek guy is here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, you close with it, and you notice it is armed with a short sword. Okay, um, and I will <clears throat> take out my quarterstaff and I will ready in action. Uh, the 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 ready to action is if it attempts to, <clears throat> if it attempts to attack me I will I will strike it with my with my uh, with my quarterstaff so that's my uh, that's my prepared action. Bronwyn, you're up next with the eighteen. Um, so I close with it as well. Um. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it with my sword, like preemptive preemptive strike. I just want to your I'll silvered sword. My silvered sword. Funny how yeah. that works out. <laughs> that is a fifteen. That hits. Awesome. Mom has been watching The Witcher. <laughs> uh, fuck again. Two hit points. <laughs> really knocking them dead. Uh, really, really getting them. Erwin and uh, the creature both had a 14. Erwin, I'll let you go first. All right. And seeing this, I am going to, uh, I'm going to yell to Bronwyn to step back and I'm going to cast Moonbeam oh, on, very nice. on this uh, bipedal rat like creature. Bronwyn, go ahead and roll a d20. 17. You hear him. <laughs> you step she steps back moonbeam me sweetheart okay that's gonna now be, keep in uh, mind that he and i are doing our action at the same time so bronwyn even though you've stepped back you'll still be within my range at this time okay go ahead erwin do i need to roll the save uh yes you need to make a con save i doubt that's going to do it uh 10 okay uh, with 10, he is going to take 210 damage, and it's going to knock him out of uh, his anamorphic form. Mm, don't right? think so. Doesn't he? No. Oh, let me check real quick. He is a he... lycanthrope. Does right. that do that? It says uh, a shape changer makes its saving throw uh, with disadvantage. If it fails, it also reverts to its original form and can't assume a different form until it leaves the spell's light. Oh, very nice. Uh, fair Sorry, enough. not not rule lawyering. <laughs> oh, no, 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 <laughs> That's no, just no, right no. there. I, I, if I don't know, I ask. That is, you are not uh, barristering me. Uh, I change into a uh, human, or I'm sorry, I change into a tabaxi bard. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's going to take seven points of radiant damage. Fair enough. However, you and I tied. I'm going after five, Bronwyn, as I start to change. 13 plus four, 17 hit you? Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, yeah. I'm going to use my short sword on you. Three damage. All right, not that bad. Uh, new round, Dirty 20. Uh, David, you noticed that this bipedal rat-like figure is now a bipedal cat figure. Mm. <clears throat> I shake my head and wonder if I had more to drink than I thought I had to drink. And uh, now that he, although he didn't attack me, which would have triggered my, my, my attack, he did attack my compatriots. Correct. And with my short, with my quarter stack, plus one quarter stack, so that's going to be a sixteen. 
Hits. It's just 1d6 plus. That's going to be six points of damage. Okay. Barbarian. Um, is it, is the tabaxi like also aggressive? Uh, you don't really know yet. <laughs> it's probably going to be since David decided to smack it in the face instead of offering it a drink to knock over or a ball of yarn to distract it. <laughs> uh, a little laser light. <laughs> can I like intimidate it into backing off a bit? You can. Now, Erwin, will that take it out of range? Uh, it's a uh, 120 foot range and I can move the moonbeam to okay. on top of him. Can you point it to the ground and that's what I was thinking. <laughs> uh, Bronwyn, uh, sure. Uh, give me an intimidation roll. Eight. Packs up a hairball and does not back away whatsoever. Erwin, you and I are up. Okay. I, I have I have a little hairball. Oh, hanging off. Uh, by the way, I am a calico tabaxi. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, well, if it, if it is uh, still being aggressive to it, I'm just going to move the moonbeam on top of him. So that'd be another constitution save. Now, if I pass this one, do I revert back to my like canthrope stage? Uh, it has. Does it matter? <laughs> Because he failed? Oh, yeah. Oh, Seven. okay. <laughs> uh, <You> he's <laughs> he's going to take uh, eight damage, radiant damage. I like Moonbeam. I like that. Yeah, that's pretty funky. So, yeah. It's just like, you got to be a good kitty or bad kitty. Now, I can still attack, though, correct? Uh, yes, but... Uh, yeah, you can. I think I'm going to insult you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, give me a save for me, please. Okay. I've got advantage on that. So. Yes, he's going to viciously mock you. Uh, yeah, with that, I roll a big whopping 17. Yeah. Uh, while his comments about your mother seem ill-conceived, uh, they do not bother you enough to go ahead and remove the moonbeam from him. Back to the monk. <clears throat> okay. I will now expend my second key. Uh, and using drunken technique, to uh, be able to take the dis to, to the disengage action. Well, no, I can't do it because I'm not drunk. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Liquor, you only, have failed me. I, I, I can only I can only attack normally, okay? So I attack normally, and that is going to be a 15. Hit. And that's a 26. Which is eight. Eight hit points of damage. Barbarian. Damage. Whose face smells like Gnome ass. <laughs> um. So since okay, since it attacked David, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it with my hand axe. Okay. Uh, because that's what I grabbed as I was waking up, and I've got a whopping nine. Swing and a miss, Irwin. You and I are up. Alrighty. Uh, I am going to keep that moon being focused on him. Okay. Uh, so uh, another constitution save. Uh, I think I got it that time. 15? 15. Okay. Uh, yes, that does save, but you take half damage. Okay. Do so, I turn back into a wear rat? Uh, let's see. The spell does not say. Odds I do, evens I don't. All right. Evens I do not. 
So I am just a tabaxi, a pissed off tabaxi now. Okay, so half of nine. Uh, you round down. Round right? down four yeah. twenty-eight. Uh, who am I going to go after? One, Irwin. Uh, I do not like you. Uh, twelve. Uh, twelve misses. David, the drunken monk. I'm gonna um, um, try to communicate with the uh, with the tabaxi. Say. Bad kitty. After you hit bad me, kitty. after you hit me, you're going to communicate. Bad, bad kitty. Why are you trying to attack us, Bronwyn? You're up. Um, has the tabaxi acknowledged David? Uh, he just spoke to it. Okay. Um, I'm. I want to try to like restrain him because I want to. I want to stop. I want to like communicate with this thing. I don't want to keep fighting. Tackle the kitty. Go ahead. Uh, any modifiers for that? Would it be strength? Uh, strength. So, motherfucker, that is a four. She makes the dive, but her math skills suck, and she lands at the tabaxi's foot, and the tail flicks across her nose. Irwin, you and I are up. <laughs> I uh, I tell uh, Bronwyn to step on back, and I am going to cast Entangle. She's flat on her face. <laughs> oh, crap. She's going to get Entangled. Can I, yep. can I roll out of the way? Uh, you, you can roll to save. <laughs> <laughs> What's the save? Uh, 14 strength. 17 for me plus zero, so... I snap out of it. Oh, she's an orc. She, I got, I got, got, I, got I got 16. So, yes, uh, we snap at your weak minded things and I smack it away before <laughs> I decide to go after uh, Irwin again. <laughs> uh, that's going to be 17 plus four is 21. Okay, yeah, that hits. <laughs> uh, seven damage to you as I slash you with my blade and <laughs> say, screw you, guy who wears robe. <laughs> <laughs> it's khakis, mate. <laughs> no, no, he's yelling at David because oh. David engaged him verbally. Gotcha. Top of the order, David, uh, the taxi seems rude. Damn near Siamese. <laughs> I, I I offer him a drink. Okay, Bronwyn, you're up. Uh, I guess is my whole action getting off my ass? You can get up and do something. Okay, I'm gonna get up. It's not like you got a forest gnome on your face or anything. Uh, yeah, <laughs> not this time. Not this time. Um, so I'm gonna go for the tackle again. It worked swimmingly well last time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a stubborn girl. I got to. Okay, that's a dirty 23. Stays on her hands and knees and puts a swipe out on the cat, flipping him over on his back. Uh, Irwin, you're up. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, actually, <laughs> I am going to use Minor Illusion and create a laser pointer. <laughs> Kind of start moving it around. <laughs> Which, what's, the, what's, the, what's the spell DC on that? Uh, on uh, Mono Illusion. I hate you guys. <laughs> 17 uh, on my roll, so. Okay. I do not know what this light is uh, because I am rolling over trying to escape uh, the woman with questionable intentions. <laughs> Top of the order, David. Uh, hey, David. There's a red dot. There's a red dot. There's a red dot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably pointed at my ass right now because I'm rolling over trying to get up. <laughs> Good try. Good try. <laughs> the dice giveth and the dice taketh away. Take it away. Take it away. That's oh, right. Yeah. So, David, you are up. All right. So, <clears throat> I assume the tabaxi did not take my drink. 
Uh, no, because uh, Bronwyn, you know what? Odds he was going to take it, even he wasn't. Odd he was going to take it, but Bronwyn knocked him to the ground. So as he reached out, she knocked him over. I was saying, well, then then I'll take a swig. And and um, <clears throat> is the is is the tabaxi on the ground now? He's starting to get up, but yes, he's on the ground. So if you want to attack, you can do so at advantage. No, I'm, I'm not going to attack. I'm, I'm going to get down on the ground with him. Just kind of sit down and like, you know, Buddhist kumbaya. Little, you know, kumbaya and say, you need to lower your aggression. Persuasion roll. He's harsh in your buzz, man. That's 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 a twelve. Okay. Bronwyn. Um so I I don't want I don't want to interfere and I don't want the tabaxi to go after me for tackling him, so I'm gonna try to run away. Not like like far enough that I'm not like in immediate danger, but I still want to hear what's going on. So you crab walk away. Yeah. Irwin, you and I are up. Uh, David, my role was an 18. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be zenning out with you. Go ahead, Irwin. And Worth I just. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, seeing this is a, this is just going to keep escalating. I ignite my hand and produce flame and uh, make a ranged attack on it. Okay, I'm go ahead. the kitty. I'm going to try to burn, burn the, kitty. the damn kitty. <laughs> the meanest druid, man. Yeah. Yeah. I love animals and plants. I, I do, them. but it's the laws of nature, mate. Survival of the fittest. Uh, let's see. Uh, trying to see what it is. Okay. Uh, actually, um, 25. <sighs> Hits him easily. Okay. He's going to take uh, 1d8 damage and... Um, Oops, that is not a D8. Uh, seven plus uh, three, I believe, ten. is ten. Ten points of damage. The tabaxi loses all of its hair, struggles to maintain itself, but since we tied five, Bronwyn is going to reach out with his claws... And does a 15 get you? No. Rakes across your britches, opening it up. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> so you now have aeration, uh, and then falls face down to the ground, smoldering. Not sensually smoldering, <laughs> smoldering. Not in a good way. Not in a good way at all. Yep. Top of the order, David. The tabaxi is face down, hairless, and not moving. And you see Bronwyn's ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to hand the tabaxi a healing potion. Because I am a friend of nature. I'm a monk. I, I believe in nonviolence. Yeah, Erwin. <laughs> okay, David believe- takes, his, takes his healing potion. <laughs> oh, oh, okay <laughs> uh bronwyn there is a cork healing potion next to the tabaxi i, I, you know, I, I guess uh, if, if you want a free healing potion there is one on the ground uh is the tabaxi showing signs of life it would be unconscious no Do i it. didn't know it was dead <laughs> That's because you're drunk. <laughs> uh, Bronwyn, uh, you can check its pulse. I'm going to pour one out. From my- <laughs> <laughs> right, right in the back of the head because it's face down. <laughs> uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab the healing potion off the ground and say like to David, like, what are you doing? Like It's already unconscious. Oh, 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 sorry. Well, I might still be a little drunk. <laughs> 
Er Irwin, your associates seem to be arguing over the merits of handing an unconscious creature a beverage. (laughs) So it's it's now up to you. Well, I mean, feeling guilty, you know, feeling a little druidic guilt. (laughs) Really? (laughs) (laughs) I'm gonna, An hour and 34 minutes in, and the druid exactly. feels guilt. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's fair. Uh, I am going to uh, pet the kitty and cure its wounds. So uh, 1d8 plus 4 healing. Uh, let's see. Uh, seven points of healing. That is enough to give it out of its stupor. It... Uh, starts to purr uh, raspy. It's raspy purr. (laughs) Oh, Lord. (laughs) Uh, David and Bronwyn, you can continue to argue the merits over giving it a corked potion, but it tries to roll over. Uh, Erwin, the healing potion is not enough to regrow hair, so your po- your spell of Rogaine has failed. Uh, but the tabaxi is now consciousy. <laughs> okay, I, I would like to, if I, if it's my turn at the top of the order, it is. I would like to try to communicate with the tabaxi, saying we did not mean to 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 hurt to you to kill you set me on fire and hit me in the skull with a potion <laughs> <laughs> that it's just you were you were running at us with the short sword so what gives yeah you know what's what's going on here the creature is a little bit delirious bronwyn what would you like to do before it does what it's going to do um I want to step back. Uh, I don't know how how kindly it's going to take to what we just did to it. So <laughs> set it on fire, killed it, and hit it. In the skull. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, well, I, I'm taking a few steps back. I I don't fair. like what's about to happen. Uh, Erwin, I'm going to go before you. Uh, the tabaxi rolls over. Here's David's voice. I assume common. Yes. And mumbles something akin to his name is Anito Montoya, and he thinks you killed his father. And then kind of shakes his head. Erwin, what would you like to do? Uh, that is a good question. <laughs> this is a, this That's is, why this I'm is in the just, big chair. <laughs> this, this encounter has been nothing but a series of unfortunate events. So. Really? Seems like mayhem to me. Oh yeah, wouldn't be murder hobo if it wasn't. That's um, uh, I am going to uh, uh, attempt to get a little clarity on this situation. It's just like <laughs> something about your father. Excuse, I am upset. I am naked as well. Uh, I am Victor. Uh, I'm not sure what happened. I, I'm going to take off my robes and give them to him. <laughs> Are you wearing underwear when you give him the robes? Or <laughs> like free balling it. <laughs> that, you know. that, that may have a very different opinion. So, so Bronwyn's ass is out. David's stripping. That's what? right. <laughs> yeah. The tabaxi's naked. Irwin's Irwin. the only one that has clothes on. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm going to have my normal monkish undergarments, you know? What's your charisma? (laughs) (laughs) Ten. Yeah. Wow. You're so bright. The moonlight illuminates you because you have no tan. (laughs) (laughs) The tabaxi look takes one look at you. Uh, D twenty straight up against me. Ten. Nineteen. You humans are ugly. I will take your robe. He puts it on, and now he looks like Hugh Hefner. (laughs) (laughs) well i suppose you giving me the robe is the least of what you could do to me since you've burned off my fine hair my eyebrows my whiskers and nearly killed me so who do i have the honor of talking to uh Uh erwin steps up 
And he's just like, well. Didn't you burn me? Yes, I did. But I also <laughs> I also healed you. So <laughs> cancels out, you know? Yeah. Okay. So no harm, no foul. Uh, <laughs> besides, everything will grow back in time. Um, Months. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit about where you came from we saw you coming down the stairs um uh i came from nobria which as you all know is a nation to the north uh west so uh my friend and i dimitri uh were uh, examining the flora and fauna of this uh land and uh that's all i care to say Hmm. Well, I mean, you'd be sub- smells. <laughs> <laughs> but did you have any alcohol left in that robe? Yes. He drinks it. <laughs> <laughs> he steals your liquor. Oh, oh shit. That's going to piss me off. <laughs> Let's kill him again. <laughs> hey. Hey, so, as he hey. stands there telling you that, he's like, <laughs> and flings it across into the debris. <gasps> that is all he's going to tell you. Oh, what are you going to do? Bust him for littering, Mr. Firestarter? Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Arsonist? Like- yeah. Oh, I just shake my head. It's just like, oh, I weep for this land. Uh- <laughs> Have you seen my friend Dimitri? We have, yes. and it seems like he has taken a spill off the stairs. I must go to him. Where is he? Uh, and I guess facing the stairs, a point to the direction where Dimitri fell. He yeah. takes off running full speed with uh, his robe fluttering in, showing his cat butt. <laughs> waves. Naked cat I, 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 I reach into my undergarments and pull out my secret stash of of of, of hooch that would explain the charisma <laughs> <laughs> i knew that was fake <laughs> <laughs> that was uh he swiftly moves across the land uh and you hear the wailing typical of most felines. Ah, ah. So somebody opened the fucking door for him so he can come in. Uh, he has <laughs> discovered his friend, Dimitri, whom uh, David watched. Uh, he has found Dimitri right over there and a little bit over there and some over there. Oh, Dimitri is hit a rock and. So I'm still holding David's healing potion. Yes. In in an effort to like comfort him because he's still a little weakened, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring him that healing potion. Okay. Just hand it to him, not say anything, stoic orc style. Just... He looks at you and says, "Are you stupid? This is just his head. This healing potion is not going to do me any good." No, I was offering it to you. <laughs> oh, I had alcohol. I'm fine. Fair enough. And he throws it <laughs> into the ravine. <laughs> oh, oh, God. This cat is a jerk. How do you like that? <laughs> How do you like me now? <laughs> Backhands the healing potion right into the river. Oh. <laughs> He's like, he like pushes it off. He, it, he just pushes it away. Oh, a little asshole! I, 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 when I, when I see the potion that I try to offer him, sail out them. I, I, I'm gonna get a bit upset and said, "You, you are kind of an asshole, kitty. You know, we, why, why did you do that? We're all, we just ask a simple question. We saved your life." He looks at you dead in the eyes, and then give me a perception check. That's going to be a plus five, it's going to be a 16. You see in his crotch area, yellow ring growing on your robe. (laughs) (laughs) 
He takes off the robe, exposing his naked body, and tosses it to you. And heads off back towards the stairs. Sad. <laughs> he is pissed on your robe. <laughs> oh my God, that he drank your alcohol, he ruined your healing potion, and he pissed on your robe. <laughs> Oh, How do you like me now? You see what druish guilt will get you? <laughs> I thought that was only that now. Druidish mothers. <laughs> <laughs> Roll initiative. Um, yeah, all right. That's as a 21 on my initiative. I'm going to re-engage this asshole. 10. <laughs> Okay, so with the with the charge feet that I have, if I move ten feet in a straight line, <laughs> oh I, lord, <laughs> then I attack him. I get plus five on my damage. So I'm I'm gonna hit him with my. Now keep in mind, you are running full tilt towards the crevasse. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Do that's, not. I, this <laughs> I rolled a 19 plus six. That's a dirty 24. Easily kick him right in the spine. And that's gonna be a four plus four is eight, eight plus five extra damage for the for the charge is four plus five. <clears throat> 13 hit points of damage. You snap his spine in half and kick him right into the crevasse because he only had four hit points despite the healing. Little fucker. <laughs> Hero. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Dawn breaks anew. <laughs> You guys may attempt to scale the mountain if you like. I, I I think we should. Maybe we'll find out what what turned that cat into an asshole. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, for your rest, you can take a short rest if you want to recover any hit points or spells, but you will not get a long rest because you spent most of the time fucking around with Felix the cat, <laughs> or in this case, Victor the cat. <clears throat> Uh, and never yeah. even looted his body. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're going to climb. I'll take dex rolls, please. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Dex, that's going to be 18 for Erwin. Pass. Looks like the drunken master's the drunken screwed, and Bronlin's not looking too happy either. I got a nine. <laughs> I got a nine. <laughs> who, went, who went up first? I, I mean, I I'm supposed to have a high dex. I would have probably wanted to lead first. Okay. Honestly. Odd Irwin, even Bronwyn. Even Bronwyn's hand seems to slip, but she manages to catch herself just as she gets a face full of wood elf ass. And you What's both with all the ass. <laughs> Yours is hanging out, dear. Uh, you both take ooh, eleven hit points as oh you my God. crash onto a rocky plateau. Fortunately, you do not go into the crevasse along with your newfound frenemy. <laughs> <laughs> and you break your fall on my face. I can't believe I rolled a one. Uh, David and Bronwyn, uh, you need to re-roll to try and make it back up. Bronwyn, would you like to move to the head of the line so maybe you sit on somebody else? <laughs> <laughs> well, I still think I should stay on the bottom given I'm the, the largest. So I will theoretically do the most damage if I fall. Fair enough. Um, Drunken Master, give it another shot. <laughs> good. For luck. Bronwyn, you too. Or when you see this and just shake your head. <laughs> yeah, so I got an 18 this time. Well, you're okay. That's, that's a dirty 18 for me as well. 
You both managed to make it back up without uh, violating Bronwyn's face again. Uh, all three <laughs> of you stand on this, uh, the edge of the cliff, and look over at the glorious sunrise coming across uh, the bog uh, town. Uh, behind you uh, is another open veil, and there is a large mountain in the dead center of this place you guys have a pretty good view of everything below you so you can go ahead and quickly scroll out uh the information yeah, that you need to do that's yeah. exactly what i was going to do i was going to sit yeah. down and uh but now now was the tabaxi handed me back my stinky pissed on robes right yes yeah, smells like cat piss no oh, motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> Uh, behind you, you can tell that you've got some hills, some grassland, some forest, uh, a ring of mountains, and then this one giant mountain in the center. Uh, since we got 10 minutes left, I'll give you the choice of the grasslands, the forest, the mountain, the main mountain, or the mountains. Bronwyn, you're the strongest. You... I, I, my, my vote is that Bronwyn decides. She's the she's the strongest. <clears throat> you mean ass face? <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's had she's had the most ass lately. So I'm know. surprised nobody wanted to let her climb up. So you, you can look because I you have the highest charisma, don't you? What's yours, Irwin? Uh, my charisma is a fifteen. Oh, oh mine's okay. only so mine's only thirteen. Well, David's is a ten, and now that he's wearing the cat piss robe, I'm gonna say it's an eight. <laughs> <laughs> um, I say we go towards the forest. Uh, I'm I'm sort of sick of climbing and being <laughs> fallen. <laughs> <on>. <laughs> Let's see, the largest thing in there is probably the most deadly. The good news is you cross the Blue Plains uh, and you come to a grove of uh, fruit trees and berry bushes. Hmm. I eat the berries. Uh, I got a berry eater. Uh, I'll, a... Eat some, I'll eat some fruit off the trees. Fair enough. <laughs> it was like, uh, oh, 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 oh. Erwin, you going to chow down? Uh, I am going to do, if with your permission, dear sir, a survival check to make sure I recognize any of this fruit or <laughs> sure. oh, Yeah, I don't, I don't have any of that. Yeah. <laughs> so David's eating berries. Bronwyn's eating fruit. Irwin, make your roll, please. Uh, let's see. Love that berries. would be 12. Okay. Uh, it's shiny fruit. Uh, David, good news. They are pitless blackberries. Oh, I love blackberries. There you go. Bronwyn, give me a roll, odd or even. I, I love the look on her face. Uh, <laughs> um, even? Even are pear trees. You've grabbed a pear. All right. Seems to, seems to taste pretty good. I will take perception checks on all three of you. <clears throat> 14. Uh, 12. Jesus Christ, what are you doing eating twigs? Uh, as, as David, I, I don't know, eats the roots of the berry bush. Uh, Irwin and Bronwyn, you hear a noise. Uh, David, you don't get to roll this round, but you can roll initiative. Uh, initiative, I the Irwin munchies, and Bronwyn. I was like, these are berries are so fucking good. <laughs> I got a stained robe and a ring of blackberry juice around you. you know what your charisma is a fucking three right now <laughs> uh, everybody roll for initiative David will be out of it this round though I got a 13 13 uh, okay that's a 12 for me 12 Irwin uh, one but if you had my initiative roll I guess that would be five right Sure. <laughs> uh, eight. Uh, Bronwyn, uh, you cannot watch David anymore. Uh, he is just grotesque. <laughs> you turn around, you see a large feathered mass coming at you, cracking through the pear trees, and it's got a very large beak on it, and it begins to flap these ginormous wings. It is an owl bear. 
<clears throat> oh, those are so cute. Mm. You should give us some berries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I go for it with my sword, just instinctively. Sure. Yeah, don't parlay. Might yeah, no, nice. yeah. no, it's coming at me and it's angry. That is a oh, dirty 23. Yep, that hits. 13 <laughs> your magic number to hit this thing. All righty. Damage. Eight damage. Nicely done. Uh, next up is David, who is still f stuffing his face with berries. Uh, the owl bear has two attacks. One is the bite. One is the claw. Odd even bite. Ooh. Uh, sorry, Irwin. Uh, sorry, Irwin. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh god. <laughs> uh, Irwin, the bite will be the fairly clear, and the uh, claws will be the other one. Eh, you're gonna be okay. Uh, twenty-one to hit, uh, and yeah, fifteen to hit. Okay, they they both hit. Oh well, scratch that. You aren't gonna be okay. <laughs> uh, I believe you're gonna fucking die. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, and good night. <laughs> Thanks for playing. Eighteen hit points of damage as this thing goes Ooh. catastrophic on your ass. Ah, well. Uh, Bronwyn, you can laugh because it didn't come after you. At all. <laughs> <laughs> the dice give us the dice taken Take away. Uh, Irwin, uh, you are laid upon by this giant owlbear, but it is your turn. Okay. Uh, with this happening, uh, I am going to summon a little thunder from down under and cast Thunder Wave. <laughs> nice. You're going to ruin the orchard. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> My pears. Hey. My berries. I no, was going to make you're, wine. You're doing this. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and it's my turn to tell David. Hey, you got a little. Yeah, you got, you got, you got a little. <laughs> you, got, you got a little there. What's my save for the thunder wave? Uh, thunder wave is fourteen con. Uh, straight orange for the owlbear. The orchard can have the orange and red. Whew. What was it? Uh, fourteen con. The owlbear is knocked backwards along with every berry bush and fruit tree as you devastate this whole orchard. How much damage does the owlbear take? Uh, let's see. It's going to be uh, 2d8. So, uh, Come on, Wynn. Roll a d20. If it's one through five, you were caught in the blast. Otherwise, you were out of it. I'm good. Uh, uh, owlbear takes 10 points of damage. Fair enough. New round. New round. As the thunder wave cracks through, David goes, oh. <laughs> uh, and we will start with Bronwyn, who managed to avoid the thunder wave for so, once. <laughs> for once. My one lucky break. Uh, I'm going to enter a rage. Fair. Um, and <clears throat> alrighty, so I'm going to hit it with my long sword again. Wah, wah. <laughs> E6, one, two, Erwin, three, four, drunken piss boy, and five, six, you hit your foot. Uh, two. Wah, wah. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> uh, roll your damage and have it. Uh, do I still I still get my plus two to my damage? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, do we round up or down? Down. So that'll be a three. Uh, Irwin, uh, you now have a new haircut <laughs> as, <laughs> as the long sword bounces off your gnomish forehead uh, as she swings for the fences but fails. Okay. I'm not uh, going to hold it against her, but uh, I'm going to seize the opportunity to shift uh, into uh, a wild shape. And well, hang on. That's you got to do that on your turn, though, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I thought that was my turn. Oh, no, you're fine. Uh, David, uh, covered in blackberry juice. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so good. Just in time to see the evil druid get get his comeuppance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. So 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 what do I turn and see? Uh, you see a giant owlbear on its ass. You see Bronwyn whacking Irwin in the face with her longsword. You do not see her scratched up ass at this time because she's facing you. Well, I, you know, these guys have it. I'm going to keep eating. By <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, the owlbear is going to get up and be really pissed. Uh, Irwin, your turn. Okay, I am going to wild shape into a dire wolf, or can we say dire dingo? We can say dire dingo. <laughs> okay. There is dingo no baby. My... <laughs> <laughs> there are no babies here, so the dingo is no not going to The dingo is like, huh? <laughs> Quick in the dead, drunken master. Quick in the dead. <laughs> okay, you are now a dingo. Uh, top of the order, Ronwin. Um... I'm going to go for it again with my long sword. Uh, it being Irwin or no. the owlbear? <laughs> the owlbear. <laughs> okay, just checking. Just checking. Had the owlbear sure. this time. Um, uh, okay. That's a roll. Oh, I actually might. Okay. 13 is your magic number. Uh, that is a 22 because I have advantage. Very nice. You'd think you'd roll better. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to talk about it. So I'm assuming that hits and... Oh, yes. It's already in lore. <laughs> so that is three hull damage. Are you crippled or something? <laughs> I don't know, man. I... The, the dice are not kind to me. David, so, so, so wait, so wait, so wait. Now you rolled three damage, and you have two points of rage damage. Oh so. wait, oh no, yeah, shit. Okay, so five damage. <laughs> Thank enough. you for catching that. Thank you, uh, David. I just uh, wanted to see if, if if you're just rolling as many ones as I am because I've rolled like <laughs> five of them. Tonight, you know? well, I don't think I don't think anyone's rolling as many ones as you are. <laughs> I'm happy. That's all I can say is I'm happy. Uh, <laughs> David, uh, the sounds of battle do not sound like they're going very well behind you. Really? Yeah. Strange. Oh, you think the sawed off uh, face sitter and uh, Bronwyn so, the bear ass would be doing better than this. So, so, so I turn around from eating the berries. What do I see? Uh, Bronwyn is now engaged with the owlbear who is upright and pissed. Uh, Irwin has a little trickle of blood coming down from a really shitty haircut. <laughs> yeah, was Irwin in wild shape to something? He is now a dingo. So I see a dingo. A dingo, an owlbear, and a barbarian walk into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> All and, right. And the I'm woods going, are flattened. <clears throat> I'm going to attack. Please be the dingo. Please be the dingo. Please be the dingo. Because <laughs> yes! <laughs> you don't know any better. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> better. No, I, I was eating by, but I didn't see him turn into He is shape. protecting the children. <laughs> the baby. I had no idea. <laughs> Literally no idea. I, I mean, the blackberries, I turn around, I see a dingo, and I see an owlbear, and they both look aggressive. There and that's going to be... That's going to be a dirty 17 on the dingo. On the dingo? Okay, that hits. <laughs> wow. It, it, I, I don't do a lot of damage. Oh, That's... so you're a barbarian? <laughs> oh, <laughs> 11 hit points. 11 hit points. Okay. 11 hit points. Oh, hold on. 11 hit points? That's like four rounds of Bronwyn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's been fun. I'm going to go. <laughs> Hang on. I haven't killed you yet. Uh, that puts the owlbear uh, up. And the owlbear is going to go after first. Uh, odd. Irwin. <laughs> oh, even Bronwyn. Uh, so orange Irwin, orange and white Bronwyn. Uh, dirty 21 and a dirty 17 on Bronwyn. The 17's on me? Yep. 
Okay, that hits. And 21 on Irwin. Uh, right. That that hits. <laughs> uh, three hit points for the bite. Oh, I'm sorry. Eight, because it's D10 plus five. Eight damage from the bite. The claws are really painful. Uh, uh, not with that roll. Uh, total of 10. To me? Yep. So eight to Irwin, 10 to Bronwyn, and it is the Bleeding Forest Gnome's turn. Okay. Bleeding Forest Gnome is going to take a Oh, I'm sorry. Bleeding uh, Dire Dingo. Okay. The Dire Dingo is going to use his uh, pack tactics, and he's going to make a bite attack uh, at the owlbear. Okay. Uh, this is going to end well. Uh, <laughs> David? I would have gone for David. What? Just me. I would have <laughs> gone for you. <laughs> You're the one that hit the dingo. I forget where I am sometimes, what show I'm on. So, <laughs> Like I warned you, the likelihood of me killing you is very low. <laughs> <laughs> the likelihood of these guys would seem very high. Yeah, that's pretty high. <laughs> Okay. You just gotta um, get in the way of me, then you'll be fine. <laughs> just land on her face again. <laughs> Seems to be a running gag. Oh man. Uh does uh eighteen hit? Easily. Okay. Uh it is gonna take uh two D six plus three. Uh let's see. Uh it's gonna take eight points of da- bite damage, piercing. Fair enough. Top of the order, barbarian. Do your damage. <laughs> um. Uh. All right. Uh. Just gonna go for it with my sword. Um. I'll go ahead and mark down two hit points right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can correct oh, me if it's on. less than that. <laughs> um. So that's a sixteen. It hits, right? Yep. All right. Easy to hit, hard to kill. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm actually dealing 10 damage. Ooh. That, seemed, that seems rather <laughs> speculative. <laughs> I rolled an 8, and I am still raging. So, uh, David, the dire puppy that you hit last time is going after the owlbear, so you aren't really sure if Bronwyn's found a pet or what's going on. But... So- I, I have an intelligence of 10, but a wisdom of 16. Okay. So I'm going to figure it out that I may have just accidentally hit my teammate that it shaped Let's you. make a D20 roll to make sure that you aren't still <laughs> drunk. <laughs> Erwin, prepare to die. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, he did not figure that out. Um, okay. <clears throat> he he was um, in, in a set. He, he was he was in a set of making a combo move. Oh, right? nice! So you know, doing this, 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 right? So that is going to be fifteen plus six is a twenty-one. Does a twenty-one hit the the dire dingo? Uh, yes, it does. DM okay. kills zero. Player kills. <laughs> no, that, that wasn't that bad. That's that's that six hit points of damage. Six hit points of damage. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm not doing flurry of blows, although I was tempted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the owlbear. Uh, that's an even. So that's Bronwyn. Uh, and that is an odd. Uh, but you know what? Let me change this because David has entered the fight. So one, two, three, four, and five, six. So bite. Yeah, bite's still going after the barbarian. Uh, one, the claws are going after Irwin. It hates you. <laughs> Welcome to Murder Hobo. <laughs> Ooh. Sorry, Irwin. I, I, I was. I have my mouth full of blueberries. I, 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 I didn't see you change shape. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna find that rope my friend <laughs> <laughs> i'm guessing a nine does not hit bronwyn no does a 14 hit Irwin? uh it just hits the the dingo i bet i change you out of that dingo here now <laughs> Ooh, 
12. 12. Okay, the dingo is still standing. I'm still standing. Uh, well, dingo, <laughs> it's up to you. Can you drink a potion in dingo form? Uh, actually, I can battle heal in dingo oh, okay. form. Uh, that, that's at this level. That's one of the, the perks of it. So uh, I am going to do that. So it is <laughs> <laughs> 1d8. So No ones on magical healing. Broadwind, okay. you're up. Kick this pig. Uh, I'm going for it again. Going for it with the sword. I'm raging. I'm, you know, tunnel vision. I'm screaming. And I got a dirty 24. Yeah. Easily hits. Now let's Three hit points damage. of damage. That's, okay, seven. That's respectable. That's, right, that's very actually good. very, very helpful. Uh, okay, David. Are you any smarter? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. I figured it out this time, and then I I said, "Oh shit!" Somebody's attacking that dog. <laughs> <laughs> and I will to to try to make up for my malfeasance. I will uh, do my um, a flurry of blows against the. Uh, against the owl bear, so that's gonna be one quarter staff and two unarmed spikes. Quarter staff is gonna be a twenty-four. It's amazing when everybody works as a team. <laughs> and my unarmed strikes both missed. So the quarter that is going to be wow. uh, nine hit points on the owl bear. That's <laughs> uh, unfortunate. That sounded ominous. <laughs> it's, still, it's still alive with two hit points. Fuck. And it's its turn. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the fray, David. You get the Ooh. bite. Uh, Bronwyn gets the claws. Bronwyn orange, copper for David. Okay, Erwin, go ahead and kill it. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's using pass tack, pack tack, it's... Uh, uh, four and five, I add seven. I don't think I'm going to get you. No, I'm, I'm at 16. Yeah, dice, give, dice take it away. All you got to do is hit it. <laughs> or Bronwyn. Uh, you can hit Bronwyn if you want. Please don't hit Bronwyn. Bronwyn's tired of it. <laughs> You're up, Erwin. Uh, Erwin? Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Does an 18 hit the owlbear? An 18 does hit the owlbear. Okay. Uh, it's going to have to make a DC 13 strength save or be knocked prone. How, many, how much damage are you going to do? It only has two <laughs> hit points. Let's find out. Uh, that'll be seven points of damage. A explosion of feathers occurs, and the creature creaks over. Everybody roll a d20. If it's five or less, let me know. I got a five. That's my girl. Uh, 16. Wow. <laughs> Odd David, even Bronwyn, and the 400-pound creature will fall on you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> That's a four, Bronwyn. <laughs> you yeah. know what? I, I, I will take pity on you and say only the owlbear's ass lands on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than try and kill you outright, I will say you get a face full of butt feathers. All righty. Congratulations, you've destroyed the orchard. <laughs> <laughs> you've nearly killed the dingo. Uh, Bronwyn is more like brown face. And David <laughs> is kitty pee yellow. Yes. How about kitty we do yellow. final thoughts? We'll start with Erwin. Erwin, this was your first Murder Hobo Inc. Did it live up to your expectations or will we never see you again? <laughs> it's it certainly lived up to my expectations and oh my god it was great uh especially when scott came in with his <laughs> uh 
you know, with his distorted view on fights, that was just awesome. <laughs> I mean, was awesome. dog hater. <laughs> dog hater, cat hater, you know, he's a total, like, uh, you know, some kind of animal trope. <laughs> you know, perhaps, perhaps if you were a better druid, that would mean a lot more. Yeah, I mean, we're in the druid setting here. Yeah, I'm just, you know, a little iffy there. Uh, Gwen, what do you think? Uh, better, worse, about the same? Screw that, us, guys. We you hate us all. That was that was fantastic. I think the fact that we were all rolling terribly made it <laughs> like extremely entertaining. Um, uh, yeah, great time. I, I think I love that part the best. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'm glad. How how close did I come to killing you? Oh, I still had thirty. Oh, pff, you were. I'm a, I'm a tank, man. Oh. Well, you smelly tank now. <laughs> uh, last but not least, Scott, final thoughts. What'd you think? No, I, as always, great job, Frank. Um, I love playing um, David. It's it's always, always great playing with new players. I haven't played with you guys before. That's what I love about this game. That matter where I'm, I'm, I'm in Mexico City right now. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't even know where you guys are located at, but, but, uh, but this game brings people of all different places together. I love playing with new people, and I had a blast. I had a blast. It was a lot of fun. A lot, and I may have to have to make. I'm going to change this guy's name, but I I I, I think he's an interesting character. So I, I I may bring him back for another one shot one day because I like just the idea. Just call him Carradine. <laughs> Carradine. Yeah, all right. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, all right. Yeah, rope boy. That. Call him rope boy. <laughs> <laughs> like oh my god! Soon. You can call him Mr. Pee Pants. <laughs> <laughs> Pee Pants and Ash. I, I I can call him. I can call him Mr. Um Um, um Kitty Pee. Mr. Pee Pee and Ass Face. <laughs> Dynamic duo. Well, guys, I I go. thought you guys all did super. Uh, the fact that your roles all sucked uh, was just a <laughs> terrific boon for me. I mean, I I didn't even have to work to make it a mess. Uh, we've got the anti druid, uh, the drunken P master, and Bronwyn blowing in the wind i guess uh I, I, i'm glad you guys enjoyed it and bronwyn actually had you gone to the mountain you would have faced the deadly threat and trust me you would be dead <laughs> the way you guys rolled uh yeah you guys uh were all righty dead, dead uh Folks, uh, I hope you enjoyed it, the show as much as we did. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. Uh, if you want to buy our crap, go ahead. If you don't, don't. Not a big deal. Uh, if you want a seat here, uh, like David, maybe. Maybe he comes back. Maybe not. Uh, Gwen <laughs> foolishly came back. So, you know, it didn't hate it. Uh, Scott, we didn't think he'd return either. So if you want a seat at the table, go ahead and look. No, uh, it's going to be a little bit sticky for a few weeks. Uh, we we do have a full uh, slot here. Uh, join us Tuesday for Between the Rolls. Join us next Saturday for the campaign. Uh, the following Saturday after that is going to be Carol and her uh, patriot love and asshole friends. As you know, I, I believe it was. Uh, what? Yeah, that they're all New Englanders. They like the Patriots. So, you know, it's all mental. What? Oh. <laughs> uh, I, thought, I thought that was like a fucking, like, 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 a, like a Twitch violation to have Patriot fans. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I, I've told them that if they like Tom they Brady cheat. and the Patriots, and everyone knows they, they cheat. Three intelligence and wisdom. So, uh, I'm not Three telling you where they're points. going because I think Carol wants to be a water genasi. So, I, I'm what, what wants to be a water ginsei? Yes, that's what right. Kyle wants her to be. Uh, but folks, uh, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. These guys had fun. I had fun. I hope you had fun too. Uh, everybody wave. Let's get the hell out of here. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.